Hi everyone, so this is our fourth video. The questions keep coming in regarding wheelchairs, accessibility, mobility, many other questions. So if you're looking for some laughs, some funny moments, and to hear about my life in a wheelchair, watch the video. Thanks guys. What about current fashions frustrates you the most? What do you wish was available fashion-wise? Lately, the most frustrating thing fashion-wise to me has been those, sh those short shorts that have only gotten shorter over the years. And instead of getting longer, even a little bit, they have now gone up your waist. So you can get like that, you know, like the six buttons. So you can have a pair of shorts that come up to here, but, but they end here. You can't find a pair of shorts that, you know, like cover your legs, you know, covers like your, your abs apparently. That's you know, that's wanted these days, I don't know. To me, you know, if you sit down, think about you sitting down in a short dress or short shorts, things look shorter. If I wore short shorts, you'd probably think I was not wearing any clothes at all. Um, so that, that really bothers me. Also things that aren't um, shirt-wise aren't long enough because like I said, when you're sitting down, think of you sitting down in class or anywhere else, you know, shirts that are short tend to kind of ride up. We like things kind of tucked underneath us to cover our back and, you know, that aren't going to move around too much for, you know, convenience sake, really. You don't want things that are going to get caught in your wheels or anything like that. So certainly I prefer longer form-fitting things so it doesn't really touch my wheelchair. It covers all the way down, you know, my lower back and any, any pants or any shorts I wear, um, it has to generally come to maybe like here at least, you know, so it doesn't ride up. This dress, I'm wearing spandex underneath it. I'm not just wearing a dress. Um, I do that because if Dean needs to pick me up, I want to have something on underneath my dress, you know. Sometimes it's not exactly the opportunity to like carry you across the threshold, beautiful lift, you know. Sometimes like get over my shoulder, I'm just gonna like, you know, heave you across this road real quick, uh, which is fine, but then you want to be covered right? I mean, anyone would. That's just, that's just normal. So I do do that. That's something I've changed. But overall, the shorts, my worst enemy. Just make normal length shorts. Cover, you know, cover some of the leg. You know, even like, like longer than this would be, you know, awesome. You know, that'd be nice. Can we meet your pets? Yes. Okay. So right now we have Arya and Drew. Arya, okay. Cool. Okay. So this is Arya. A little girl dash hound. She's very little, she's like 10 pounds, but 10 pounds of cuteness. Look at this little face. Who can say no to this? Oh, you kicked it. So this is Aria. Aria and Drogo are brother and sister. Drogo, come here. This is Drogo, the, uh, the brother. So he is the biggest of the litter. So these are my two pet dogs. This isn't, these aren't my service dogs or therapy dogs, nothing like that. They're just pets. Um, we've had them for three years. And they're adorable. They're trouble. They are a lot of trouble. But they're like, look at this face. Like, just like this little, this, this little face. Who doesn't want this face? It's just so cute. Mm. This is all this dog wants. If you just keep him in this area all day, like that's that's all he really wants out of life. Oh, look. <laughs> he needs attention. He needs attention all the all the time. Oh, for Ida. Oh, okay. Okay, gentle. Okay. You're cute. Drogo also does meerkat, where he stands on his back little legs, like this. But he does it by himself, obviously. Yes, yeah. okay. You sit there. If I go outside, this is how I take them. You know, it's convenient. You don't have to worry about leashes tangling or anything, so I just roll outside like this. Put them on the ground. They go, Arya, the snow's really cheap, so Arya's like, ah, I'm gonna pee, let me up. And then she's lying back on my lap. But before I had Stella, they kind of just got rolled around like this a lot because Ari likes to be on my lap. She's a lap dog. She's got a gray whisker. She's got a little cat. She's got a little cat fish whisker. A little gray. She's graying. Look at she's old. How old are you? Hmm? How old are you? Like three. Oh, is that like 21? Oh. Anyway, so these are my dogs. My pet dogs, anyway. Okay, Ari. You down? Do you want to stand up? 
I think, you know, like, like people say, it's human nature to stare. I think it's human nature to want to look someone in the eyes and be eye level with someone. So I think from that perspective, yeah, I want to stand up. I would like to look you in the eye and, you know, <laughs> I'm tall, so I would like to be tall again. But, you know, if I have to sit down, it's not the worst thing that can happen to someone. Being in a wheelchair isn't, you know, your life's not over. You're just living life sitting down. That's basically, that's basically the difference. I, I wash my dishes sitting down, I walk my dog sitting down, I clean sitting down. That's the only, that's really the only difference. So would I like to stand up? Yeah, sure. If someone said, hey, you can walk tomorrow or stand up tomorrow, I'd say, excellent, how? Um, and sure, that would be fantastic. But, you know, am I going to sit around being <laughs> depressed about not being able to stand up or walk? Not really. I get around fine. I'm thankful enough to have um, mobility devices that help me in my everyday life, and I can't really complain past that. So, do you have super duper arm strength? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. I mean, my my arms actually have gotten larger, like in muscle mass, since. Well, I mean, it's been two years, and. People often say, you know, is being in a wheelchair tiring on your arms? At first, yes. You know, even pushing around your house is tiring. But as you go on, and because sports has helped in that sense, you know, you build arm strength. You know, I lift, I don't know if you, back up for a sec, if you can like, I'm constantly basically doing that all day. So, you you know, and you're moving. I, I rely on my arms for everything, so yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, no. But I do have like, I certainly have more than I had two years ago. A lot, a lot more. And um, I mean, basically, my arms have become my legs. So, I what I've lost in my legs, I've gained in my arms. Really, in a big sense, I think is the best way to explain it. Can I borrow your handicap parking tag? It depends. Are you disabled? <laughs> okay, this is a this is a huge pet peeve, really, for anyone in a wheelchair. Um, okay, I, I kind of do want to address this because I do think it's important. The whole aspect of people with invisible disabilities having these parking um, accessible parking spots. If you see someone that doesn't look like they're disabled, or you see someone that doesn't look like they're physically handicapped. That does not mean in any way, shape, or form these people are not entitled to parking spaces. They have those parking spaces for a reason. You may not be able to see it on the outside, but inside, you know, you may not see that I dislocated my shoulder, but it happened. So, you know, they, they need help and they need that accessibility just as much as I do in that sense. Um, so I want to first address that. Don't harass anybody. If you see somebody that looks like me, but, you know, or, you know, standing up, walking around, looking able bodied, you know, don't judge. You don't know what their health is. You don't know what their medical history is. They have it for a reason. So just accept that. Move on. Don't harass anybody. Um, if they don't look, look how you think disabled should look. Um, those spots aren't like a, you know, as much as the saying, I'm in it for the parking, and I kind of think that's hilarious. We need those spots. Those spots, those spots aren't ours because we're like, oh, I'm disabled. Um, this is like a, a reward for being disabled or like a perk, you know. Um, we really need those spots because I can't cross parking lot. I can't roll, always roll across parking lot. I can't always push across parking lot. I need somewhere that I can safely and have the space to get out of a vehicle, put my chair together, and le and hopefully have easy access to the store. So those parking spots are only for those who need it. Um, obviously, if you're my friend, you know, if, if uh, Chris and Amber were driving around, you know, we all go to the movies. Yeah, I'm gonna give them the, my my spot, like my parking, my parking, uh, it's like sticker or voucher or whatever, um, for their car, so we can all park and you know have a smooth um, entry and you know visit. But I'm not gonna give my sticker out there if. If you're you not just present. want the convenience. Yeah, if I'm not present. If you just want the convenience of, oh, cool, I don't have to walk. Well, you know, we, you have to see it from our perspective that you don't want to walk. 
you know, like really you're too lazy to walk across the parking lot, like what we wouldn't give, you know, to walk across the parking lot. You're complaining about it. Um, so that's kind of where we, as disabled people, struggle. Because we know you see the par parking spots. We all know that at some point you wish you had the sticker or you wish you're like, oh, I wish I broke my leg so I could have that close parking spot. I know. It's not like I wasn't able-bodied, you know, three years ago and didn't want to park in those spots too, but we never, we don't. Um, because even if you park in those spots for a second, that can take a spot away from someone who really needs it. Um, even if I am having a good day, I will park in those spots, even though I'm in a wheelchair, just because someone may need it more than me. Um, so yeah, unless you're disabled or you want to take on my disability for the period of time that you're going to use my parking space, no, you can't have it. But if you come with me shopping or you come with me, you know, to uh, Canada's Wonderland or amusement park, stuff like that, yes, there are perks, um, of course, yes, there are, you know, positive things that come, I guess, um, well, that act does help for us, really, you know. Uh, if I fly within Canada, Dean comes, flies for free. That's because I need Dean to pick me up and carry me to the bathroom. I need Dean to, you know, give me medication or help me eat or whatever it is for the day. Um, so things that we have that may seem like an, a huge advantage to you, it's really just evening the playing field. I hope that explains it okay, you know. So just be mindful. Um, if you aren't disabled and don't have a pass that is rightfully yours, you know, don't use it. If you need a pass for a short period of time, those are also available. So if you break your leg, if you um, need it for something, you can apply and get one immediately for maybe like the duration of your injury, I guess you could say. So if you really want one, apply. If you get accepted, then you're deemed as needing one. I hope that Thanks again for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe below. Feel free to ask more questions, any questions you can think of, and we'll be making more videos um, regarding Stella, my service dog, walking in braces, and more Q&As if there are any. So, can't wait to hear from you guys. Thanks.